the red wheelbarrow. So much depends upon a red wheel barrow glazed with rain, water, beside the white chickens. This is it, and the wonderful poem it is by the American poet William Carlos Williams. At first glance, it seems not to be saying much, for it talks about everyday things like wheelbarrows, rain and chickens. Yet the first two lines seem to be implying that these things are important. So much depends upon. If we choose to go along with viewing these things as important, we'll pay attention to these objects to find out what makes them so special. At first, the objects just stand out stark naked in all their simplicity. There's the right wheelbarrow, there's the rainwater, rather white chickens. This is reinforced by spaces left between couplets and above all the line divisions, which disrupt the sense units of the poem. Wheel is separated from barrow, rain from water, white from chickens. This slows down the reading process and forces us to pay attention to the individual words, to focus on these things as they are. The red wheelbarrow functions as the central image of the poem. The other two objects exist in relation to the wheelbarrow. The association with the white chickens highlights colour by creating a contrast between red and white. It may also suggest that the wheelbarrow is usually used for farm work. The inclusion of farm work by the chickens is on the one hand optional, on the other hand less so. For white chickens? Why not snakes or guinea pigs? This possible farming context is, however, also undermined by the real absence of farm work in the poem, for the wheelbarrow stands alone in the rain. Through lexical presence and real absence, the text may evoke social context, but also loneliness in one and the same image. Let's focus on the rain now. Traditional poetry often looks at nature rather than culture to find out what is important in life, and so do we. We first focus on what's basic, and then we move on to what is less basic. In this poem, however, what's basic is a wheelbarrow, man-made and inscribed in a social context, and what's not basic is natural, the rain. The natural and the cultural are thus inverted in the poem. In addition, the effect of the rain on the wheelbarrow is to glaze it, an activity we associate with crafts and arts, pottery and painting, in which arts are finished to the artistic product. Glazing produces two, resu two results in the poem. One, it further strengthens the inversion of the natural and the cultural, for it is the rain that glazes the wheelbarrow. Two, somehow the poem is talking about art. Let's stay with art. The poem tells us to pay attention and to pay attention to the details of reality. But the poem also has an aesthetic edge, for in selecting its elements and arranging them in the special way we've just discussed, the poem is also glazing reality. Attention to attention and attention to reality slightly mutate here into attention to the aesthetic product. So much depends upon paying attention to a poem glazing reality. This is as far as the interpretation of the poem takes us. What's amazing is that a poem like this can conjure up in little more than a dozen words and an enumeration of three simple objects, a whole world made up of every one of its dimensions. There's first of all nature, reality as it is. Secondly, there's society, reality as it is made and shaped by the human element. Thirdly, there's the supernatural, the mystery of life. And finally, there's individuality, that which escapes the limitations imposed by the form of three dimensions. If you look at the poem, you will recall the breakup of reality into two aspects, the made and the unmade. The unmade is the rain and the chickens, the made, the wheelbarrow. This naturalizes the rain and socializes the wheelbarrow, for the wheelbarrow is after all an object created by human beings and for a human purpose. In between, however, are the chickens. Natural as they are, they're not devoid of social significance, since they suggest the possible context of farm work for the wheelbarrow. And now look at the beginning of the poem. So much depends upon. It signals that the poem is talking about something important, way beyond the apparent simplicity of the objects being described. We've said that the poem focuses on the act of attention, the objects attended to, and the aesthetic significance of the arrangements of objects and words. Whichever of these elements we favour, the movement is always one of transcendence, of going beyond what is apparently and immediately present. Transcendence, going beyond reality, is a word which takes us close to the supernatural. The fact that art is said to be a modern substitute of religion strengthens that supernatural element. There is an inescapable feeling of loneliness in the picture the poem presents. 
emphasized by the paradoxical presence and absence of the social context of farming. The wheelbarrow is being glazed, it's beside the chickens, and yet it also stands alone in the rain. Loneliness is the grim face of individuality. In addition, the text is telling us to pay detailed attention to common reality, to the singularity of the humdrum, and singularity also maintains close ties to individuality. The poem thus presents a whole world in a few words. And yet, there are aspects of the poem that also seem to defy the reduction to a world made up of the natural, the social, the supernatural individual. The play with colour, red and white, may be one, and so is the poem after we have interpreted it. So much depends upon a red wheel barrow. This is more than paying attention to objects and ending up with interpretations. Whatever we interpret, it is no more than an interpretation, and after it the poem speaks again, inviting us to cast a new, fresh look at the wheelbarrow, those chickens, that rainwater, that contrast between red and white.